Hi, good afternoon students. My name is C.A. Sonakshi Sood and I'm going to be your teacher or rather professor to understand the basics of accounting. So let's on board, get on board to this journey of accounts and into the financial world where we'll understand why learning accounting is important and what role it plays in the entire gambit of finance. So before I start off my lecture, let me give you some two, three basic points that you need to take care when you are understanding the concepts of accounting and obviously the entire journey of uh, learning. I will be majorly teaching y'all in English, understanding that English would be a preferable language for all of y'all. However, for the students who would want to understand uh, in Hindi and prefer Hindi as their language, please do not uh, bog down from this understanding. I will be teaching y'all in Hindi as well. And for the students who prefer English, um, English would be a preferred language here and uh, gradually whatever will be taught in Hindi will also be you know, replicated in English as well. So yes, let's get started with this journey of understanding accounts. Let's deep dive, get into the depth of the meaning of accounts and as I said, what role it plays in the entire finance fraternity. So the word accounting, if you understand, you will always find that this word is majorly used by individuals who are in the finance stream. What is the role that this small world accounting really means to this entire finance world? So before getting into the depth and to the basics of what accounting is, let's first learn what does the definition say. So here is the definition. Yes, so accounting is recording, right? What is it saying? It is It is basically the art of recording, okay? Classifying and summarizing in a significant manner in terms of money. What? Transactions, okay? And events, which are in part of a financial character. Yes, too many words. How do I digest? What is it saying? Accounting is the art of recording. Yes, what is it? It is the art of recording. I'll go one by one. Please just understand the definition first. I will let you know what this, this individual word mean to you in accounting. So what does it say? Recording, classifying, and then summarizing the information, right? This is how it is. So let's go step by step. What do you mean by recording an information? And please remember, when we say recording, classifying, and summarizing, it is always and always with respect to two elements, which is your transaction or an event, which are in terms of money, okay? So here I find there are at least five words that we need to understand. And for students who are not from a finance background, for people who are from finance background, may be familiar with these words. But for students who are not from a finance background, let me uh, make you all understand what do we rather mean with recording, classifying, and summarizing of the transaction and the events. So before we get into the analysis and the breakdown of this entire definition of accounting, let me ask you all, are you aware about the concept of bank account? Yes. So when I look at the word accounting, what does this mean? Yes. What does this mean? You are making an account of something. You're trying to create an account of something, right? So here, Taking cognizance to this entire word account, let me first explain to you what happens in a bank account. All of us do have a bank account in our preferable banks. For example, ICICI Bank, right? Or you may have a bank account with HSBC or maybe an HDFC. Do you, have you all rather thought of it? What are they exactly trying to do for you? What kind of service are they providing to you? What is ICICI, HDFC, or HSBC actually doing for you? 
on a day-to-day -day basis, you use a debit card, right? I've tried to replicate a debit card here, right? What is the bank trying to do for you? Have you all thought of it? For example, today I went to ICICI Bank. Yes, ICICI Bank has opened a bank account for me. They tell you the minimum account balance that you need to have is 10,000. That means I give them 10,000 rupees. So here I say that, okay, in the bank, I deposited, right? That's very layman terminology. You deposit money in a bank, right? So what did I do? I deposited 10,000 rupees in a bank account. Now, try to understand. Today, which is as on a particular date, for example, we are on 1st of March today. I deposited 10,000. On 2nd March, I want to, I've gone to a mall, right? I've done some shopping for myself. I wanted to buy some shoes for myself. I spent 2,000 rupees in shopper store to buy shoes. I gave them my debit card and that's how they deducted this amount, right? They deducted this amount and I was left with a balance of 8,000 rupees. Simple maths, I had 10,000 rupees. I bought shoes from 2,000 rupees in the shopper shop. Now, ultimately, I have 8,000 rupees, hai, right? Aise hi, day on day basis, month on month basis, I keep spending some amount from my bank account, right? So for example, now I have 3rd of April ko, again 6,000 rupees grocery ke liye expenditure kiya. Maine ye kharcha kiya. Jiske baad the balance account, balance amount rather that I have in my bank account is only 2,000 rupees. Right? Yes or no? So, as a layman, as an individual, try to understand that can you memorize this entire transaction flow or not? This event where we are spending in the bank account or where we are spending in the bank that is what is termed as a transaction, right? Where there is give and take. What is happening? There is a give and take happening but in the form of money. Money is very important. If I today am providing services to you in the form of teaching of basics of account and I do not get in return any money from you that is not called a transaction involving money right as long as I provide a service to you for an hour the uh, the teaching that uh, the knowledge that I have imparted for that you are giving me for example 700 rupees so that will be termed to be a transaction in money terms okay Coming back to this example, what is exactly happening here? I first deposited, I put some money in the bank account, then I used the card that was provided by the bank to make certain expenses, right? What is this expense over here? What is it called? The money that you are using to buy something, that's an expenditure that you are doing, right? For uh, non-finance background individuals, this is term to, termed to be an expense, okay, and here you are left with 2,000 rupees, okay, but think, can you actually memorize your entire transaction flow? For example, this has happened on 3rd of April. Now, again, I use this bank account on 5th of July. And I spend 1,000 rupees and the final balance that I have in my bank account is 1,000 rupees. Do you think in the month of August you come to me and you ask me, hello ma'am, do you know what is the bank balance of your account? And I would be wondering, how much have I spent in the last 4-5 months that I, from the last that I actually opened my bank account? I remember I deposited 10,000 rupees, but do I remember that did I make a complete expenditure of the 10,000 rupees or do I have some balance left? That's the question that accounts is going to solve for you. What do you do in accounting? What is happening here? Try to understand. What is the bank trying to do for you? It is trying to record the transaction. 
what is it trying to do for you it is trying to record the transaction why so that at any given point of time midnight 12 o'clock right you want to know what is the balance of my bank account what are you going to do you are going to log in to your bank right to the internet banking portal that the bank has provided to you put the login id put the password and there you have your record that see this is the amount that you deposited in your account these were the expenditures that you made and this is the final balance that you have do you need to memorize it no who is doing it for you the bank is doing it for you in what form in the form of bank account yes in the form of bank account so take cognizance to this methodology because this is very common being a finance professional not being a finance professional anybody today even the jandhan bank yojana that our prime minister had started even a farmer today knows this concept of what exactly bank is doing for them and what kind of benefits bank is providing to them so coming back to my definition of accounts now here you have recording so i have made you understand these two terms as well as this term now right you are recording the transaction who's doing it for you the bank is doing it for you right now let's look at the next aspect classifying okay for you to understand what classifying and summarizing will have uh, the cognizance here let me take another example with the help of which you will understand what exactly accounting is doing and why is it very important for you to understand what is happening in this entire flow of transaction right so tell me do you know what this word means business it's a very normal word everybody uses it today right so you know right business is something that you do to make a living right you have a concept or you want to start off you don't uh, want to go with a regular job you want to do something of your own that's where you decide okay today i want to start my own business your own venture that is what you call as business okay so when i open a business for example today i decide that i want to open a flower shop right do you think business can be done in isolation think about it can you do business alone and by alone i do not mean mean that i am the only person who will single handedly run the business that's a very different concept what i'm trying to explain here is do you think without the help of anybody around in your uh, fraternity can you in your uh, in the uh, in the organization or for example you can also consider in the environment that you are living in can you do business on your own solely without interacting without buying or selling anything to anybody around can you do that i don't think so think about it when you are doing business you for like i said i'm giving you an example of a flower shop a flower shop that you have decided to open in a market where you think that the selling of flowers is going to be uh, good and the profit that you will now again i'm coming up with the word profit park that word for a bit you just think that you are going to benefit out of this business and you are going to make money because the main and the first and the foremost reason for you to do business is something that i have already written for you on the board it is actually to earn profit and maximize wealth deep diving it in further what do you mean by profit and what do you mean by maximize wealth let me go back to my discussion on opening a flower shop in a market right now i have decided that i want to open a flower shop but do you think that i can do it in an isolation as i said i don't think we can do it for example to sell flowers i need to first buy flowers right there could be a possibility that i have an organic farming wherein i have sown certain seeds and i have certain set of flowers that are blooming in my garden which i can sell in the market but each and every person here cannot be doing the same thing and even if they are the seeds that are required for sowing the uh, 
sowing the seeds as well as those seeds that are very organic in nature need to be bought from somebody or need to be bought from a uh, manufacturer right a person who actually manufactures that seeds right so it is very important for you to understand that you are going to ultimately end up buying something or the else from a uh, outsider not actually creating it on your own to make your business happen so here as i said i need flowers right what i need flowers so i know a market which is close to my house where you get flowers in bulk right so what is the intention that i should have as a business person here that every day in the morning i will ensure that somebody that i hired right hired as an uh, say uh, like for example a person who's going to help me with buying of flowers on a day to day basis from the mandi which sells flowers in bulk so what i'm going to do i'm going to ask the person to go to the mandi right buy the flowers and get it to my shop right this is my shop here where i am selling my flowers right what am i going to do i'm going to ensure that every day the flowers come here right and for example let's consider that i like to uh, sell only roses that's what i want i have asked my individual or the person who's actually helping me with this and i'll define who that person is later for example i asked him to get 50 roses for me he bought 50 roses at the rate of 5 all of us know when we buy stuff in bulk we are going to basically get some discount so that's how i spent 250 rupees here to buy flowers right later on i the next day thought that no 50 is not enough i want to buy more i again bought 100 at the rate of 5 here wherein i have spent 500 rupees this is something that i am putting from my pocket okay now let's see what happens on day 1 okay i'm just erasing this out for convenience this is day 1 okay students and this is day 2 see there's a learning from day 1 that 50 is not enough and that's the reason i bought 100 now let's look at day 1 so maine kya kiya yahan pe maine 50 rose kharide the 5 rupees ke hisab se jaise maine bola maine 250 rupees kharch kiye ab yahi 50 roses maine apne shop mein actually 10 rupees ke hisab se beche to maine kitne paise kamaye 500 और अल्टीमेटली मेरा मुनाफा क्या हुआ ढाई सौ का जस्ट फॉर द पीपल फॉर द वंस हु वॉन्ट टू अंडरस्टैंड दिस इन इंग्लिश आई बॉट फ्लावर्स फ्रॉम द मंडी एट द रेट ऑफ फाइव रुपीज पर रोज बट आई सोल्ड दैम टू माई कस्टमर एट फाइव एट टेन रुपीज पर रोज सो दैट मीन्स bought at 5 sold at 10 i the difference of 10 minus 5 is actually that 5 rupees that i am going to earn from this entire transaction of buying and selling 50 roses right so this amount that you earn is termed to be the profit for you what is this termed this is the profit now let me also explain one more word over here to you now that we are actually learning about profit this in terms of finance is revenue the amount that you earn by selling a product or a service is revenue this amount which you had to spend to buy the roses is your purchase cost what is it it is your purchase cost please take this down because th this is going to be very important what is your purchase cost what is your revenue and what is your profit these are very familiar terms in accounting and understanding this what it exactly means and how you are going to use it in future is very important and it is key to accounting honestly 
okay now continuing with the example here second day what i did i bought them at 5 same rate but again i bought them at uh, uh, sorry i sold them at 10 so what is happening here again 10 minus 5 5 rupees profit per rows that's how you do the calculation as 5 into 100 which is going to be 500 right so your profit from day 2 transaction is going to be 500 rupees so what is your intention here as a businessman will you want this to increase as much possible right on day 1 as we saw here we earned 250 rupees as profit on day 2 we earned 500 rupees as profit do you think that what i'm going to do here am i going to reduce the amount of profit that i earn do you think that on day 1 if i got inr 250 as your profit on day 2 you would want to reduce it to 200 do you think this is something a scenario that you would want to look at a same person who knows how to do business will never want this to happen right aap kyu chahoge ki aapka munafa ya aapka profit day to day basis pe kam ho aap to yahi chahoge ki aapka profit badhte jaye correct so that my friends we come to the exact learning that we required here that why do we do business we do business to earn profit and to maximize wealth and from this concept i am now going to take you forward to understand the classification and the summarization aspect of an accounting so as we learn that you cannot do business in isolation that means i need more resources please take this word down resources resources is what all is required for you to undertake this business right on a day to day basis so let me take you to this understanding now that when i was wanting to do my business of selling flowers in the market opening a flower shop what all services were required first i had to buy i had to buy my flowers so in order to buy flowers i had to hire right for example two people at least to go to the market and buy the product right then in the shop i needed a salesman to sell product which is my flower then how will somebody know that actually i today i have opened a flower shop in a nearby market and do you think the entire world is going to know that oh uh, miss xyz has actually opened a flower shop and we should explore it do you think that's going to happen no so marketing right you need somebody to actually do the marketing for you right to let people know that listen this is a shop that has been opened in this locality and you can go and explore it and these are the discounts that you will get right and so on and so forth there could be many other you know services that you will require now you might have to pay certain x amount of money to this person to this person you are going to pay some money to the person who's actually doing marketing for you you are going to right pay so there are different kind of expenses that you are going to incur what is accounting firstly doing it is going to record all this ki maine flowers ko kharidne ke liye kitne paise diye maine apne salesman ko kitne paise diye jo flower lekar aata hai usko maine kitne paise dene hain marketing ki meri kitni cost hai right kabhi kabhi home delivery bhi hoti hai right to distribution राइट right? डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन की कितनी कॉस्ट है राइट right? फर्न एंड पेटल्स का नाम सुना ही होगा आपने फर्न एंड पेटल क्या करती है बुकेज डिलीवर करती है घर पे बर्थेज हो एनिवर्सरीज हो कोई स्पेशल ओकेजन हो राइट right? तो डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन भी होता है तो ये सारी अलग अलग तरीके की कॉस्ट हैं राइट दीज आर डिफरेंट कॉस्ट दैट एज एन इंडिविजुअल एज ए बिजनेस मैन यू आर इनकरिंग सो वॉट इज हैपनिंग हियर रिकॉर्डिंग तो वी हैव अंडरस्टूड राइट ये सब रिकॉर्ड होगा 
but don't you think the nature of this transaction is different nature of this transaction is different right so accounting mein aap har expense ko kisi na kisi tarah categorize karte ho kaise categorize karte ho for example personal clause personal cost kya hoti hai jo bhi salaries ab salary kya hoti hai pehle wo samajh lete hain hum jo bhi हम सबको सैलरी पता है राइट right? हम किसी के पास जॉब करते हैं उस सर्विस या उस वट जॉब के अगेंस्ट हमें एक एक्स अमाउंट मिलता है जिसको हम सैलरी बोलते हैं राइट right? तो इसी तरह जैसे मैंने बोला मुझे कुछ इंडिविजुअल्स चाहिए जो मंडी जाके uh, मेरे फ्लास लेकर आए सम हु आर एक्चुअली गोइंग टू सिट इन द शॉप एंड एक्चुअली गोइंग टू सेल द फ्लास फॉर मी आई एम नॉट डूइंग दैट सो आई हैव अ सेल्स मैन दे सो आई हैव टू पे सैलरीज टू तो इन सब की कॉस्ट सैलरीज में आएगा मार्केटिंग की कॉस्ट अलग आएगी मार्केटिंग एंड डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन करके ठीक है सिमिलरली आपकी जो फ्लावर को परचेस करने के लिए जो परचेस कॉस्ट हमने पहले पढ़ी थी वो भी बिल्कुल अलग आएगी राइट right? सो so, इस तरह हम एक्सपेंसेस को रिकॉर्ड करने के बाद क्लासिफाई भी करते हैं तो अकाउंटिंग में रिकॉर्डिंग भी होती है क्लासिफिकेशन भी होती है अब आ जाते हैं हम अपने तीसरे एस्पेक्ट पे विच इज समराइजिंग वॉट इज इट सो लेट्स अंडरस्टैंड वॉट आर वी सींग बाय समराइजिंग in this you need to understand that once for example day to day basis pe aapne for the month of march aapne sare transactions kar liye theek hai aapka transaction record bhi ho gaya classify bhi ho gaya ab mereko pata chalta hai ki march month mein total revenue revenue kya tha sales jo main karti hu revenue aaya 1 lakh theek hai और मेरा एक्सपेंडिचर मतलब ये रेवेन्यू ऑन करने के लिए मुझे कितनी जगह खर्चा करना पड़ा मैं हमने वो पीछे पड़ा है हमें सैलरीज देनी पड़ रही है हमें मार्केटिंग के लिए देना पड़ रहा है पैसा डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन के लिए कुछ हमारी कॉस्ट हो रही है सिमिलरली परचेस जो मुझे रोजेज एक्चुअली खरीदने हैं उसके लिए मेरी कॉस्ट जा रही है तो वो सब मेरे ये एटी में इंक्लूडेड है मैंने सब डाल दिया इसमें अब अगर मैं वन लाख रुपीज में से 80,000 थाउजेंड माइनस करूं तो जैसे हमने पहले पढ़ा है ट्वेंटी का मेरा प्रॉफिट हो रहा है राइट right? तो इसी चीज को हम समराइजेशन बोलते हैं कि हम पता लगाते हैं क्या वट डू आई ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड यर वेदर माई बिजनेस हैज एक्चुअली मेड प्रॉफिट इन दी मंथ ऑफ मार्च और डिड आई एक्चुअली इनकर अ लॉस न वॉट डू मीन बाई लॉस फॉर एग्जाम्पल my revenue remains the same 1 lakh rupees but i actually had to spend 1 lakh 30000 rupees to earn a revenue of 1 lakh so my revenue is 1 lakh but i am actually the amount that i'm spending is actually 30000 so what is happening here when i say 1 lakh minus 30000 what am i saying 1 lakh minus 1 lakh 30000 Oh, is it that I actually spent more and earned less? So I made an extra expense from my pocket of thirty thousand, right? Initially, you are just spending. करते हो business के लिए आप अपने pocket से अपनी savings से डालते हो. तो मैंने खर्चा किया एक लाख तीस हजार का. मुझे इनकम हुई सिर्फ एक लाख की तो तीस हजार extra खर्चा किया जो recover भी नहीं हो रहा है. ना मैंने कोई profit earn किया. So this is a loss right when your revenue is less than all your cost that is called a loss situation right so please note it down when revenue minus expense is a positive number right that means revenue is always more than your expense then you say that you have earned profit however when your revenue 
minus your expense actually gives you a negative number that means your expense is higher than your revenue then you say that you have incurred a loss and this situation analysis of this situation comes only when you summarize your entire record of transaction your classification of transactions and then ultimately understanding okay according to my classification itna mera total revenue hua itna mera total cost of purchase plus all the other added cost include karke meri net situation kitni ban rahi hai ye aapko summarization se pata chalta hai right so now we have broke down the entire definition of accounting we have understood exactly what does recording mean what does classification mean and what does summarization mean but the most important thing that you need to understand here is everything should be in terms of money as i said any scenario students any scenario jahan pe give and take मनी के फॉर्म में नहीं हो रहा है दैट विल नॉट बी कंसिडर्ड फ्रॉम अकाउंटिंग परस्पेक्टिव उसकी ट्रीटमेंट बिल्कुल अलग होती है ये अकाउंटिंग में आप कवर ही नहीं कर पाओगे उसका रिकॉर्ड क्योंकि आप रिकॉर्ड क्या करोगे आप वैल्यू क्या डालोगे आपको ये तो पता है कि हाँ एक्स वाई जेड ने आपको टीचिंग की सर्विसेज दी ठीक है बट आपको ये नहीं पता कि उस टीचिंग की सर्विसेज की वैल्यू कितनी बनती है क्योंकि मैंने तो पैसे दिए नहीं आपको राइट right? सो so, वो ट्रांजैक्शंस आप रिकॉर्ड नहीं कर पाओगे इसलिए यहाँ पे जहाँ पे मनी का इन्वॉल्वमेंट नहीं हो रहा है ट्रांजैक्शन में वो हमेशा याद रखना कि आप उसको कवर नहीं कर पाओगे सो so, हमने पूरा ब्रेक डाउन कर दिया अकाउंटिंग एज आर्ट ऑफ रिकॉर्डिंग क्लासिंग समराइजिंग इन सिग्निफिकेंट मैनर इन टर्म्स ऑफ मनी ऑफ ट्रांजेक्शन एंड इवेंट्स ठीक है we have fairly understood this now let's go to a very important concept right now that we know what does accounting mean and we are into the aspect of financial accounting ab hum dekhte hai ki accounts ki classification kaise hoti hai right how do we actually classify our accounts so here you can see the two ways rather the two streams that you can see here the first is your impersonal account second is your personal account let's look at personal account first the word itself person person aap kis ko bolte ho individual ko mr x is a person miss y is a person right so personal mein aapke sare jo individual accounts hote hain right वो कवर होते हैं अब आप एग्जाम्पल ले लो आप जैसे मैंने आपको सबसे पहले बताया था यू हैव ओपन अ बैंक अकाउंट विद आई सी आई सी आई बैंक दैट आई सी आई सी आई बैंक इज गोइंग टू कीप एन अकाउंट ऑफ योर्स डू यू रिमेंबर वॉट दैट अकाउंट कुड मीन येस इट कुड बी माई नेम राइट सो वट विल माई नेम बी फॉर एग्जाम्पल सोनाक्षी सूद अकाउंट राइट तो एग्जैक्टली वही चीज आपको यहां पे समझनी है पर्सनल अकाउंट वही होता है पर्सनल में जो नेचुरल पर्सनल होता है उसमें आप इंडिविजुअल के नाम के जो अकाउंट्स होते हैं वो खोलते हैं मिस्टर एक्स मिस वाई राइट सो ये सारे हो गए हमारे नेचुरल पर्सनल अकाउंट्स राइट right. अब आर्टिफिशियल पर्सनल अकाउंट्स कौन से होंगे डू यू नो वट आर्टिफिशियल पर्सनल अकाउंट कुड बी फॉर एग्जाम्पल अ नॉन लिविंग अकाउंट फॉर एग्जाम लाइक किसी कंपनी का अकाउंट हो गया राइट right? अभी कंपनी है जैसे बजाज फाइनेंस तो बजाज फाइनेंस का क्या होगा आर्टिफिशियल पर्सनल अकाउंट वाई ये नेचुरल पर्सन मतलब लिविंग बींग्स ओके सो दैट्स व्हाट इट इज नेचुरल पर्सनल अकाउंट आई जस्ट टेक यू टू द नोट्स ऑफ दैट एज वेल यस सो योर इट इज नेचुरल पर्सनल अकाउंट द अकाउंट रिकॉर्डिंग ट्रांजेक्शन रिलेटिंग टू द इंडिविजुअल ह्यूमन बींग्स यस 
yes relating to individual human beings as i said living persons okay it is going to be with respect to individual human beings example anand's account ramesh account pankaj account to ye kya hai ye individuals hai living human beings hai inke account ko hum bolenge natural persons personal account okay now the second concept that i taught you all is artificial personal account so any transaction recording that you are doing with respect to companies banks right that is going to be termed as artificial person so personal accounts mein as i said natural mein living human beings aayenge jo aapke artificial honge wo jo aap companies form karte right thoda sa main usme aapko samjha deti hu pehle aapne ये कॉन्सेप्ट तो हमेशा सुना होगा कंपनी का फर्म का इंडिविजुअल का प्रोपराइटरशिप का थोड़ा सा बेसिक आप उसमें समझ लीजिए बिफोर वी गेट इन टू दिस बिकॉज उससे आपको आर्टिफिशियल पर्सनल अकाउंट बेटर पता चलेंगे सोल प्रोपराइटरशिप वो होता है फॉर एग्जांपल टुडे आई वांट टू डू बिजनेस मैंने सोचा है मैं अकेले बिजनेस करूंगी आप डू नॉट गेट इट कन्फ्यूज विद यर आइसोलेशन कॉन्सेप्ट दैट इज कंप्लीटली डिफरेंट मैं इंडिविजुअली बिजनेस करूंगी दैट मीन्स मैं खुद इस बिजनेस में इन्वेस्ट करूंगी किसी से हेल्प नहीं लूंगी ना कोई किसी और का इसमें कोई इन्वॉल्वमेंट होगा राइट सो दैट्स हाउ आई एम गोइंग टू डू इट आई हैव अ बिजनेस आई एम गोइंग टू बी सोलली रनिंग दैट बिजनेस दैट्स व्हेन आई से दैट आई हैव अ सोल प्रोपराइटरशिप फॉर्म लेट्स गो ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ पार्टनरशिप वॉट डू यू थिंक पार्टनरशिप वुड बी वेन टू पीपल पर्सन वन एंड पर्सन टू कम टूगेदर ओके विद अ कॉमन motive to actually do business together they are going to both invest money in that business together and run the business together based on terms and conditions that are going to be listed in an agreement which is usually termed to be a partnership agreement aap usme kuch terms and conditions ke upar agree karte ho and then accordingly you run a business that's called as a partnership business okay the third way of doing business is By opening a company, right? आप एक कंपनी खोलते हो उसमें जितने पार्टिसिपेंट्स हो सकते हैं बिजनेस करने के लिए उतने रख सकते हो एंड आप बिजनेस रन करते हो राइट right? तो ये कंपनी का अकाउंट हो गया सोल प्रोपराइटरशिप तो इंडिविजुअल लिविंग बींग हो गया राइट right? अगर उसने एक अपना अलग नाम ना रखा हो फॉर एग्जाम्पल अगर एस सोनाक्षी सूद टूडे आई वॉन्ट टू डू बिजनेस बट उस बिजनेस का नाम फॉन्स एंड पेटल्स है तो इट विल गो अंडर आर्टिफिशियल ऑल दो आई एम ओनिंग इट सिंगली बट बिकॉज इट्स एन आर्टिफिशियल इंडिविजुअल आई विल डू इट अगर वो डायरेक्ट ट्रांजेक्शन मेरे साथ हो रहा है तो मिस सोनाक्षी सूद के नाम से वो आएगा ओके सिमिलरली अगर कंपनी है एक्स वाई जेड कंपनी है एज ए सेट बजाज फाइनेंस है तो वो सब आपके आर्टिफिशियल पर्सनल पर्सनल अकाउंट में आएगा ठीक है समझ के यहाँ पे कुछ एग्जाम्पल्स है जैसे दिल्ली क्लॉथ मिल्स राइट साहू एंड साहू हंसराज कॉलेज तो कोई भी अकाउंट जो नेचुरल पर्सन में नहीं आएगा वो आर्टिफिशियल इसमें कंसिडर किया जाएगा विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू लिमिटेड कंपनीज बैंक हो गए या कोई भी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन जो फॉर्म होती है उसका लेट्स लुक एट द थर्ड एस्पेक्ट राइट जो आपके पर्सनल अकाउंट में कवर्ड है रिप्रेजेंटेटिव पर्सनल अकाउंट राइट लेट्स अंडरस्टैंड वॉट इज रिप्रेजेंटेटिव पर्सनल अकाउंट सो रिप्रेजेंटेटिव पर्सनल अकाउंट में आपको ये ध्यान रखना है कि जो आपका अकाउंट हो रहा है ठीक है जो रिकॉर्डिंग ऑफ ट्रांजेक्शन हो रही है वो आपका एक्सपेंस एंड इनकम ठीक है दे आर क्लासिफाइड अंडर नॉमिनल अकाउंट्स ये कॉन्सेप्ट हम अभी बाद में बस थोड़ी देर में पढ़ने वाले हैं बट टू मेक यू अंडरस्टैंड जस्ट बाई एन एग्जाम्पल हर लाइक यहाँ पे एक एग्जाम्पल ले लिया वेज इज आउटस्टैंडिंग अकाउंट राइट एंड प्रीपेड इंश्योरेंस अकाउंट तो दिस इज बेसिकली क्या होता है इन सर्टन केसेस द अमाउंट ऑन अ पर्टिकुलर डेट इज पेबल टू द इंडिविजुअल्स या फिर आपको उनसे पैसा लेना होता है सच अमाउंट रिलेट्स टू पर्टिकुलर हेड ऑफ एक्सपेंडिचर और इनकम और इट रिप्रेजेंट्स पर्सन टू होम इट इज पेबल ये थोड़ा मैं आपको एक्सप्लेन कर देती हूँ ये समझना थोड़ा डिफिकल्ट होता है सबके लिए हम रिप्रेजेंटेटिव में क्या बोलना चाह रहे हैं अंडरस्टैंड द वर्ड यहाँ पे रिप्रेजेंटेटिव मतलब आप किसी को यहाँ पे रिप्रेजेंट करने वाले हो और रिप्रेजेंटेटिव हमेशा रिप्रेजेंट करता है नेचुरल 
पर्सनल अकाउंट और आर्टिफिशियल अकाउंट्स को ठीक है सो अब जब नेचुरल पर्सनल अकाउंट को आप एग्जाम्पल ले लो फॉर एग्जाम्पल आपको सैलरी पे करनी थी ठीक है अब आपका ऑफिस में कॉन्सेप्ट ये है कि मार्च की सैलरी अप्रैल में जाती है ओके तो जब तक आपने वो सैलरी पे नहीं की है अपने एम्प्लॉयज को आप एक स्पेशल अकाउंट बना रहे हो जिसका नाम है अब बस सुनने सुनना उसको अब कंफ्यूज मत होना सैलरी पेबल अकाउंट ठीक है आपको सैलरीज पे करनी थी बहुत सारे एम्प्लॉयज है आपके राइट right? तो नाउ दैट यू हैव टू पे दिस अमाउंट यू आर एक्चुअली पार्किंग द एंटायर फिगर फॉर एग्जाम्पल एज अ कंपनी ऑन अ मंथ टू मंथ बेसिस आई हैव रफली ट्वेंटी टू ट्वेंटी वन लैक्स टू बी पेड फॉर द मंथ ऑफ मार्च माई अमाउंट वॉज ट्वेंटी वन लैक्स ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड आई एम पार्किंग दिस अमाउंट इन एन अकाउंट नोन एज सैलरीज पेबल अकाउंट ओके किसी किसी को बाउंस जा सकता है पॉसिबिलिटी बट समझने की कोशिश कीजिए ग्रेजुअली यू विल गेट इन टू द नैक ऑफ दिस कॉन्सेप्ट ओके एक सैलरीज पेबल अकाउंट है उसमें मैंने ये अमाउंट पार्क करके रखा हुआ है जो मुझे आज सैलरीज पे करना है अप्रैल में मैं यहाँ पे क्या कर रही हूँ हर एक इंडिविजुअल के नाम पे एक अकाउंट नहीं खोल रही हूँ जो मेरा नेचुरल पर्सन में जाने वाला है कि मिक्सटर एक्स हो गया वाई हो गया जेड हो गया ए बी सी डी ई एफ मुझे दस पंद्रह बीस अकाउंट नहीं खोलने हैं मैंने एक अकाउंट खोल लिया बस इतना पैसा मुझे सैलरी पेबल करके देना है तो ये अकाउंट किसको रिप्रेजेंट कर रहा है मल्टीपल अकाउंट्स को एक अकाउंट भी इसमें दिखेगा मतलब एक को कितना पैसा जाना है वो भी इक्कीस लाख बीस हजार में है सिमिलरली व्हाट यू नीड टू पे टू बी इज आल्सो योर टू सी इज आल्सो योर डी इज आल्सो योर सो दिस अकाउंट इज एक्चुअली एक्टिंग एज अ रिप्रेजेंटेटिव राइट इट इज एक्टिंग एज अ रिप्रेजेंटेटिव योर ओके सो द रिप्रेजेंटेटिव टू दिस नेचुरल पर्सनल अकाउंट दैट इज द रीजन इट इज कॉल्ड एज रेप्रेजेंटेटिव अकाउंट ओके एंड दिस अकाउंट इज गोइंग टू बी क्लासिफाइड एज अ रेप्रेजेंटेटिव पर्सनल अकाउंट ओके रेप्रेजेंटेटिव पर्सनल अकाउंट नाउ सेकेंडली द सेकेंड क्लासिफिकेशन दैट वी लर्न हियर इज योर इन इम पर्सनल अकाउंट राइट रियल अकाउंट एंड नॉमिनल अकाउंट लेट्स लुक एट दिस रियल अकाउंट इज वेयर द अकाउंट सो बेसिकली रिकॉर्डिंग ऑफ ट्रांजेक्शन इज हैपनिंग विद रिस्पेक्ट टू टेंजिबल थिंग्स राइट तो टेंजिबल क्या होता है टेंजिबल वर्ड का मतलब होता है समथिंग दैट यू कैन टच यू कैन फील यू कैन सी ओके एनीथिंग दैट यू कैनॉट टच यू कैन नॉट फील और यू कैनॉट सी इज समथिंग विच इज कॉल्ड एज इन टेंजिबल ओके सो लेट्स लुक एट योर रियल इज विद रिस्पेक्ट टू टेंचुबल स्टप्स राइट कैश यू कैन सी यू कैन फील राइट सो दिस इज अ टेंचुबल यू नो प्रोडक्ट सिमिलरली गुड्स राइट अगर मेरा ये पेन है आई कैन टच दिस आई कैन फील दिस आई कैन सी दिस दिस इज ऑल्सो अ टेंचुबल प्रोडक्ट एनी थिंग दैट यू कैन नॉट टच अब आप सोचो फॉर एग्जाम्पल सॉफ्टवेयर होता है ठीक है आपके लैपटॉप को तो आप देख सकते हो तो वो टेंशबल हो गया बट जो सॉफ्टवेयर होते हैं उसके अंदर क्या आप सॉफ्टवेयर देख सकते हो मैंने तो नहीं देखता आज तक इंस्टॉल हो जाता है सॉफ्टवेयर बट आप उसको फिजिकली टच नहीं कर सकते हो राइट फिजिकली टच नहीं कर सकते हो आप उसको देख नहीं सकते हो दैट इज कॉल्ड एज इन तो रियल अकाउंट में जो ट्रांजेक्शन होते हैं वो सिर्फ और सिर्फ टेंचबल थिंग्स के होते हैं जिसको आप टच कर सकते हो राइट right? so which can be touched, purchased or sold. so जो आपके tangible goods है वो आप purchase या sale भी कर सकते हो such as like I as I mentioned goods हो गया cash हो गई building, machinery, they all are tangible real accounts, right? whereas the accounts which are related to intangible things, right? as I said, वो आपके intangible real accounts में चले जाएंगे okay? 
जो यहाँ पे वर्ड्स लिखे हैं इनको अभी आप ध्यान मत दीजिए सिर्फ जो मैंने आपको सॉफ्टवेयर का वर्ड समझाया था आप उसको समझिएगा बस ठीक है सॉफ्टवेयर इज समथिंग यू कैन नॉट सी यू कैन नॉट टच यू कैन नॉट फील सो गोज अंड इंटेंशबल रियल अकाउंट लेट्स लुक एट द नेक्स्ट कॉन्सेप्ट ओके विच इज अबाउट नॉमिनल अकाउंट ओके इन नॉमिनल अकाउंट वॉट इज हैपनिंग एनी ट्रांजेक्शन दैट यू आर डूइंग विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू एनी इनकम एनी एक्सपेंस एनी प्रॉफिट और एनी लॉस वो आपका नॉमिनल अकाउंट में ठीक है चला जाएगा जैसे रेंट हो गया रेंट क्या है आपका खर्चा है इट्स एन एक्सपेंस फॉर यू राइट रेंट इज एन एक्सपेंस फॉर यू सो रेंट बिकम्स अ नॉमिनल अकाउंट ओके सिमिलरली सैलरीज राइट salaries wages commission interest bad debts everything is right a nominal account why because all these are expenses interest loan expense for example loan you pay interest on loan that is also a nominal basically interest also then becomes an expense and accordingly it is classified under a nominal account so let's just recap here yes let's just recap accounts two types that we discussed personal and impersonal under personal three categories that we discussed what was category one year natural personal account in which it is with respect to living human beings then we learned about artificial personal accounts for example sole proprietorship or a company or probably a partnership all those are covered under artificial accounts and representative as i said they represents these two accounts okay anything that becomes a conglomerate that means you are getting all the expense together and putting it in under one account for example salaries instead of mentioning salary for mr a b c d e f what you did you took the amount together booked or parked that amount in one account which is salary payable account that becomes your representative personal account coming to this part which is your impersonal yes so under impersonal what are you trying to do you are actually breaking it down into two parts which is your real account and your nominal account so in real account as we said if it is related to a tangible uh stuff which is tangible goods it is then a tangible real account if it is with respect to intangible something that you cannot see you cannot feel it is intangible real account then the second categorization of impersonal is natural uh, it is nominal account in nominal you record transactions for an account which involves any expenditure any income any profit or any loss yes students so that's all for today this is just a basic understanding that i'm trying to give you about what is accounts what importance it holds in the entire finance fraternity why we do accounts and how do we do accounting today i have covered only the concept of classification of um, accounts later on we will understand what are the three golden rules of accounting and then also i'll take you through certain examples which will help you to understand that in practical life how do we exactly implement the golden rules as well as implement the concept that we learned about classification of accounts which is personal and impersonal account so thank you for today i hope you all like the lecture and i look forward to seeing you again next week thank you.